guys, how's it going? We are back with another Halloween tutorial this week. We're gonna be making this Victorian inspired man in the moon sign. If you've come across this tutorial and you don't have a Cricut machine, not to worry. I wanted to quickly mention to you, I'm gonna link a blog post down below that will explain how you can transfer a design over onto your sign without having a Cricut. So wanted to mention that really quickly. You can still make this exact same sign even if you don't have a Cricut, but this tutorial will be specific for Cricut. What you're gonna need is a wood round. Now I bought this one at Home Depot. Mine is 18 inches. They make them in a variety of sizes, so just choose whatever size you want. They do come unfinished, so what I chose to do was use a stain. I had this one on hand already, so this is an oil-based stain in the color Early American, and then what you wanna do is go ahead and stain it and then also put polycrylic over that. And you're going to do that before actually putting your stencil on. So polycrylic is the best. It does not yellow when it's on and you don't have to get the spray form. You could also get um, just regular in a can. Now this is water-based and my stain was oil-based. So I did do my stain, waited about three days made sure it was really, really dry, and then I applied my polycrylic over it. So that's really important because water and oil don't mix. If you wanted to do white paint, that's really, really pretty. The space I'm using it in is already on a white wall, so I wanted to have variation, which is why I chose to stain it. But this paint is one of my favorite paints to use for signs. So linen white chalked by Rust-Oleum, and I would still suggest painting it and then putting your polycrylic over top before putting your stencil on. When it comes to stencils, I made signs about a year ago to sell and I tried everything under the sun to make it the most efficient and easiest and get the best result. What I found to be the best is using stencil vinyl and I did not have good luck with Cricut's actual brand of vinyl stencil, so I'll link the one that I used below. I believe I got it on Amazon. You will also need some transfer tape and again, this is not Cricut's brand, this is just something that I bought on Amazon, so everything that I use will be linked down in the description box for you. Lastly, you're gonna need some acrylic paint, and so this will be whatever color you want the design to be. You could also do white, or if you have a white background, you could do black on white. I also like to use the little makeup foam sponges, more so than the one that I used in the video, or you can use a little paintbrush. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now for our stencil, the design was purchased from Etsy. It was $5. Again, I will link it below for you. We're gonna resize that. I did mine a little over 17 inches. Now, if we look over here, it's giving us an error and it's saying that our image is too large for my largest cutting mat. You can't do anything over 11 and a half by 23 and a half for a 12 by 24 mat. So we're going to have to cut this design and print it on two different mats. Grabbing a square from my shapes panel, I'm gonna resize this to the size of my largest mat, which is 11 and a half by 23 and a half. That way I don't exceed that size when I'm making my two separate cuts. I found it to be helpful to shift my design a little bit so that I have the least amount of things to cut through and line up, if that makes sense. So there was a break in the nose and if I placed my splice right here, I would only have to worry about the cheeks and the circle when lining it up and not have a ton of things that I needed to line up properly. And I'm gonna copy and paste that, send it backwards so that I can really kind of see how it's lined up, reposition it where I want it, and then we're gonna go over to our file name and we're gonna weld those pieces together. Now selecting our design as well as one of the rectangles, we are going to go ahead and go down to slice. And then you're going to just delete out any of the extra pieces that you don't need. So we're not gonna need the rectangles, we're just gonna leave the design behind and delete everything else out and go ahead and cut it. Now, if you don't need your design to be any bigger than 11 and a half inches in diameter, then you can just disregard all of the slicing and the squares and all of that. Um, all you're gonna need to do is hit make it and go ahead and choose stencil vinyl for the setting. I had my dial set to custom 
and then chose stencil vinyl. If you don't have a Cricut Explore Air 2, you don't have the custom dial, choose your vinyl setting. I believe that should work for you. I'm gonna get my two mats loaded up and get to cutting. Now on to weeding our design. You're going to take out the design and leave the negative space because we're gonna be painting the design onto our wood round. Grab your transfer tape and cut it to size for your stencils. Go ahead and get that placed on top of your stencil. This always takes a little bit of time, so just take your time with it, work all the bubbles out, and then cut off the excess. Using a straight edge, I drew myself a guide to cut off the end of both of my stencils so that where the design would meet up, there would be no breaks between the two. I chose to tape my two stencils together in the center and work it from one end to the other. You could do them separately if that makes more sense to you. This is just what I kind of chose to do and it worked out okay for me. Um, you just really wanna focus on trying to eliminate any bubbles as you're doing this and get one end down, pull off your backing and then go for the other end. Remove your transfer tape from your stencil once you've got it applied to the wood round, and then just go back and kind of make sure all of your edges are pressed down really well before you begin painting. As I said, I actually didn't love this little sponge brush, so I would recommend a makeup wedge or just using a regular craft brush. You want to make sure that you're doing up and down motions, so kind of pouncing it and doing super, super light layers. I probably did five to six coats of this black paint and that is going to be your best bet for preventing bleeding. Acrylic paint dries really, really quickly, so you don't even really need to worry about dry time. Just go ahead and start taking your stencil off as soon as you're finished painting. This next step is optional, but I like to use this matte clear enamel spray over any painted signs. Very last step is to get one of these little wall hooks. They make them in different sizes that hold different weights. And you just need to put it on the back of your wood round and use the little nails that it comes with to put those into the two little holes and you are good to go. I think that covers just about everything for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and we will be seeing you guys next week. Bye.